Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at the first official beta ISO release of Cutefish OS 0.5. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links will be in the description below. Well, I went over and I downloaded Cutefish OS Beta, the official ISO, the first one released by the development team. When you go over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB or throw it in a virtual machine and boot into it for the first time, this is actually the screen that you're met with. You've got the Cutefish OS installer right off the bat, and it automatically opens up the installer. It doesn't have a welcome screen. It tells you that, you know, there's no partitions, there's not enough drive space, the system is not plugged in. All you got to do here is just cancel and click yes, and it opens up the desktop. Now, what I want to do right off the bat is I want to make this a little darker. It makes things just a little easier to see when you're watching the video. So I think I will go with something pretty dark. So let's go with that right there. It's a good looking desktop. It comes with Chromium out of the box. And I want to go ahead and open this up and show you the news about it being officially released. We're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit and look at some of the changes and take a look at those as well. It says the noteworthy highlights in Cutefish OS are as follows. The file manager can now support sorting, show hidden files. Also, the startup is much faster. Now, I do have to say this. When I put it into the virtual machine and started it up, it started up extremely faster than any of the previous versions that I have taken for a test drive. That is definitely a true statement there. And it says the file manager can now support sorting and show hidden files. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the file manager. Let's take a look at that. And as you can tell, the global menus are up here for file manager. File manager, new folder, properties, quit. You've got edit where you can select all, cut, copy, or paste, and then help. Obviously, it's going to show you the about information. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. And I'm going to say the easiest way to show hidden files is probably just to right click. New folder, select all, open in terminal, show hidden files. So if you just click on that, there you go. It shows you your hidden files. It doesn't ask for a password. You just right click, choose it, and it opens it up for you. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't want these hidden files shown and you want to keep yourself from making a mistake, just right click and leave them off until you actually need them. So that is definitely something that's new this time around. That wasn't available in the previous version. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's open Chromium back up. It says the setting app now includes options to configure the touch version, minimize animation, and dock smart hide. So let's zip on over to the settings and open that up and take a look. And on settings, of course, you got the LAN. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and shut that off. I, I said this in a previous video a while back that if you're in a virtual machine, because it's going to recognize your virtual machine as an Ethernet connection, go ahead and shut the LAN off for the simple fact that it'll just keep running in the background trying to find a wireless access point, and it could drain your battery on a laptop. And then, of course, Ethernet's going to show there a wired connection display. You can use rotation of your display. If you've got a secondary monitor and you've got it turned up on its end, you can come in here and adjust that if you need to. Appearance. We're in a light theme right now. Let's go ahead and switch dark theme on. And you still have the capability of dimming the wallpapers if you want to. I don't need that necessarily right now, so I'll leave that right there. Also, system effects. If you're watching this video and you've tried Cutefish in the past and you've booted it up, and for some reason your windows were all square and your dock was square and you were like, man, what's wrong? This doesn't look good at all. This isn't what I'm seeing. You have to come into settings and turn the system effects on. Because if you don't, if you look, everything gets a squared off look to it. Even the dock. Okay. Mine, when I booted into it, was on. For some people, it might not be. So this is the place you need to come and fix that issue. Okay. You can go over to fonts. Right now, font size is small. You can set it to medium, large, or huge. You can change this if you want to. I think they look fine the way they are right now, so I'm going to leave that. Then, of course, background. Then your dock. It's on the bottom right now. You can switch it over to the left if you choose. Switch it over to your right. You can make it smaller. You can make it larger. I'm just going to leave it on medium. And then, of course, 
you can have the display mode. Do you want it to always show? Do you want it to always hide? Do you want it to smart hide? And that's something they just said is new. And it is because in a previous version, it just said always show, always hide. Now you can do a smart hide. Or as you would know in a different Linux distribution, an intelligent hide. Let's just see here. Smart hide. Let's set that. Let's minimize it. Let's go to Chrome browser. And as you can see, it has disappeared. You can come back down. It'll pop back up. And there you go. So let's minimize that. Let's go back up here. Let's go to always show. And then when you minimize and you open up your web browser, it stays all the time. So you can adjust that to how you like using your distribution. If you want it to hide, you can set it to hide. So no big deal there. Then you've got user, mouse, date and time, language, battery, power, and then, of course, about. This is system version 0.5. System type 64. Now the kernel version is 5.10.0-8. I do believe we're at present on 5.14. If you do download Cutefish OS and want to use it on newer hardware, I have had a bump in the road with a newer laptop where when I tried to boot it from a USB, the keyboard would not work. But that was on an older version. That was on 0.4. But at the same time, just know if you've got newer hardware with it using an older kernel version, you may run into some issues. So I'm going to let you know that right up front. So let's go ahead and close out of there. Go back over. It says the launcher introduces the new drag and drop option and the ability to add and remove new items. Awesome. The terminal supports window transparency, blur, and font settings. So I guess now whatever you're using font-wise and size-wise in your system, it will transfer over to the terminal. First thing I want to do in the terminal is let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. They don't. Let's go to top. Okay. Right now with this machine, I have issued it 4 gigabytes of RAM and two CPUs. At present, at rest, we're using about 1.1 gigabytes of RAM, which is expected with this operating system because you do have the transparency up here, and you've got the dock, and you've got you've got a little bit better looking operating system. It's going to be a little bit heavier on the resources, so just keep that in mind up front if you want to give this one a shot. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay, go back over to Chromium. Cutefish 0.5 also includes a new notification system because I don't have a notification. I can't really show you. I have seen screenshots of it, so that's just something you'll be looking at in, into the future. Plus, I do believe they introduced a new screenshot app. There it is right there. Let's go to the screenshot app. So if you want to take a screenshot in Cutefish, all you got to do is click on screenshot. If you want it to take the whole screen, you just double click the screen. And then if you want to take a selected area, you just start where your cursor is and then just Hold down the left button, highlight what you want to screenshot, and then click the check mark, and it'll take the picture. Okay. Awesome. I actually do like that. That is a screenshot app that does not get in your way. And it also introduced a new video player, I do believe. There's the video player. Okay. There's your Cutefish OS video player. It gets, kind of goes along with the theme of the operating system. So that's that's pretty nice. I like that. So let's close out of that. You do have your package installer right here. This is your Debian packages. If you go online and download any Deb packages, just download them. And what you can do is open up your file manager. And if you've downloaded it, just go to your downloads. If it's right here, just click on it, hold, drag it, drop it in here, and it'll automatically select that file. It'll open it up. It'll tell you what kind of dependencies that need to go with it. And once you select that, you can hit install and it will install it for you so let's close back down and you've got calculator so a few more apps than what they've had in previous versions that i've looked at but this is the first public beta they're definitely making giant leaps forward to getting this ready for prime time obviously now if it's something you want to give a shot and download and try all you got to do is go to en.cutefishos.com i'll include that link down below in the description of the video once you go there, it just says right here, download 0.5 beta. And when you come over here, you just click where it says mega. Click on mega. It's about a 1.5 gigabyte ISO image. And it takes absolutely no time to download. It is Cutefish OS 0.5, something you might download, throw in a virtual machine and give it a shot. If it is, let me know in the comments below.
Please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.